Footings are used to distribute the weight of the building above so that the ground can hold up that much weight in one spot. Our out-of-the-box footings in Revit have certain default dimensions which can be modified and we'll need to do that for this project. So to create a custom footing for our project, we need to begin by executing the footing tool, which oddly enough happens to be called wall up here on our ribbon. So above foundation, it says wall, and go ahead and select on that. When we do that, we can come over here underneath properties and select our type selector list. And when we click on that, we can see that there's currently two separate footings that are available in here. One's called a bearing footing and the other is a retaining footing. Their general shape is a little bit different and their dimensions are a little bit different. In order to create a new footing that's going to be good for our project, what we're going to do is we're going to base it off of this bearing footing 36 by 12. So make sure that that is selected and then come down here to edit type. When you select on edit type, the next thing we'll want to do is come over here to this big button that says duplicate and we're going to create a duplicate of this footing. Now the reason why we want to do this is we don't want to actually delete this 36 by 12 that's already in there. Who knows, we might decide to use it later on in the project. But in this case, we want to use its properties and just modify them a little bit so it's going to be a 42 by 24 inch footing. So we're going to click on duplicate. The name, of course, is going to be 42 by 24, which is the size we want. We'll also get rid of this little extra two that shows up at the end. Click on OK. Next, these are the properties or the dimensions of this footing. And once again, we want it to be 42 inches by 24 inches. So you can just type in 42 inches here. It'll automatically convert it to feet and inches. For the foundation thickness, this is going to be 24 inches, a nice big footing. And we'll come down here and just click on OK. We'll now notice that underneath properties over here, we have our 42 by 24 inch footing and it would be ready to place into our project. So by duplicating and modifying the dimensions of an existing footing, we can adjust its size to meet most of our needs. Footings support the weight of the structure up above. And in this case, we wanna support the weight of our foundation wall, which is going around the perimeter of our structure. In order to do this, we can either do it inside of a plane view like we're currently in, or in a view that I prefer is the 3D view. So let's go ahead and go into a 3D view and try to place them inside of that type of view. So up here, click on the little house, and this brings us into our 3D view of our structure. Now, if we're gonna be placing a footing, I usually like to zoom in just a little bit so we can see our entire foundation inside of the screen, and we can see the edges of our foundation walls. Next, we have this underneath structure, it says foundation, and we're gonna select wall. This is gonna execute our footing tools. We can see over here that we have a 36 by 12, but that's not the size that we want. We wanna use our 42 by 24 inch bearing footing. Once you do that, all you have to do is move your arrow over here, select on the wall, click, and it'll automatically put a footing on the underneath side of this wall. And let's go ahead and do that for each of these walls. And we can see how it's placed them underneath the walls and it's automatically cleaned up on themselves here at the corners. So footings can be installed at foundation walls quickly, particularly if we select them inside of 3D views. In this exercise, we'll introduce how to add our footings and piers under our columns. Of course, their job is to transfer the weight of the building above into the ground, which will help keep the building structurally sound. To begin this process, let's use our skills that we developed when creating our footings to create some of our own custom piers and footings that we'll place under these objects in our model. To begin by doing this, we need to come up here on the Structure tab on the ribbon. Next, we'll move over here and we can see there's this option for Isolated. And that's going to be the kind that we create. It's going to be considered an isolated pier or an isolated footing. So we'll select on Isolated. Next, over here on the left-hand side, we have a 72 by 48 by 18. Now the 72, 48, 18 isn't quite the size we're going to be needing in this project. So we're going to need to duplicate it and then add a few more sizes to it so that we can place those into our model. So to begin with, we're going to come down here to Edit Type and click on Edit Type. Next, we really need to create 
three separate footings for what we're getting ready to do. So in order to do this, we'll start off by duplicating, creating a new footing, and then we're gonna do that two more times. So come up here to duplicate, select on that. And the first one we need to do is 48 inches by 48 inches by 18 feet. So a very deep looking footing, which is gonna actually act as one of our piers to hold up the column up above. So we'll start off by renaming this to be 48 by 48 by 18 feet. And click on OK. Now the width is already OK. That's 4 feet. Or actually, this should be 48 inches, so I'll have to rename that here in a second. And we'll go ahead and change this to be 4 feet. Change this to be 4 feet. And this is going to be 18 feet. So I'll go ahead and put feet on that. Up here, there's still an option to rename it so I don't have to duplicate it in order to create a new one. Since I need to change this to be 48 inches by 48 inches, I can just come over here, click rename, change this to be inches, change this to be inches, and click on OK, and we can see that it renamed it. And we have the appropriate dimensions down here. Now let's go ahead and do two more duplicates. This next one's going to be 48 inches by 48 inches by 15 feet. And we're going to go ahead and type in 15 feet right here. And the next one is going to need to be quite a bit smaller. It's going to be 72 inches by 72 inches by 24 inches. So we'll duplicate it. We'll do 72 inches by 72 inches by 24 inches. And we'll go ahead and type the 72 inches in, which we can now see is six feet. We'll make sure that that's six feet and we'll do the 24 inches for right here. Once we have that, we can already see that if I move my cursor around, we have this little footing that's just sort of following it around no matter where I go. Now, technically I could start placing it here, but I sometimes have mixed results placing these inside of a 3D view. So I usually recommend in this case, with this type of footing, doing it inside of one of our plan views. In this case, I'm gonna to go to the one dash first floor and I'm gonna double click on that. Next, we need to put these footings right in some of these different locations. So we're gonna do footings around here, and then we're gonna do some footings here in the middle. The first one that we need to do is gonna be down here in the lower left-hand corner. So foundation, isolated, and we're gonna choose the appropriate size off of the list. Now, since we're on the first floor, and this one needs to go down further because this corner of the building is a little bit deeper than the other parts of the building, we're gonna come over here to the 48 inches by 48 inches by 18 foot, and we're going to come right over here until we hit the intersection of them, and we're just gonna click. And then by default, it'll try to drop these footings down to be at the right elevation level. And we'll continue to do this on around, except in all the other locations, we don't need the 18 foot. We're just gonna need the 15 foot deep one all the way around the perimeter here. So just a matter of clicking each place where these columns happen to be located at. Once we've done that, we can come back in and start to put our different pier footings on the underneath side of these areas as well. Now that we've gotten to this point, let's go ahead and change this over to be the top of footing. So zero dash top of footing. And now we need to add our main footings on the underneath side of these piers. So in order to be able to do that, we once again need to come up here to isolate it. And we're gonna pick that smaller footing that we did earlier. In this case, the 72 by 72 by 24. We'll come over here. And once again, we're just gonna start picking the intersections of these different spots. Now that we're almost all the way around, we can come over here and we can select right here. Now, I can tell you since this one's a little bit lower than the rest of them, it's gonna create an interesting condition when we look at this in a 3D view. So go ahead and hit Escape after you've placed them in all the different locations, and then come up here to this default 3D view button and we'll take a look at what we have. We can see that we have the piers and the footings in every location. The only problem is that this one's a little bit high. So in order to be able to modify it so it matches the properties of these down here, all we have to do is select on this particular footing. Next, 
we tell it, it needs to be offset a certain distance down. Well, when we created these walls, we dropped this wall down three feet. That's the reason why this is still floating up here three foot higher. So what we need to do is we need to set an offset distance of negative three foot and then click on apply. And you'll see it automatically drop down and clean up on itself with the other footings that are down there at the uh, base of the foundation wall. So placing these items is as simple as creating a footing of the appropriate size, then selecting the column you want to put it under. In this exercise, we'll use our drawing tools to create a concrete slab or floor at the first level. So in order to do this, once again, we need to be underneath structure and then come over here and we're going to need to find our slab tool. And we can find that over foundation right here. And we're just going to select a structural foundation slab. Next, once that activates, we can come over here and we can see that we have different thicknesses of slab that we can use. For this example, I'm just going to keep it with the default and just going to use a six inch foundation slab. Next, we need to draw out the perimeter of our slab or our concrete floor that's going to be inside of this area. So in order to do that, we can come over here and we have a choice. We can either use one of our different drawing tools, such as just draw lines or draw a rectangular shape. But the thing that I usually like to do is use the pick walls tool if that's available to me. So I'll go ahead and select on the pick walls tool. Next, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so I can see where I'm picking. And I'm going to try to pick on the inside face of the wall. If you pick toward the outside, it'll try to draw this to the outside of the wall. But in this case, we just want it to be on the inside of our foundation wall. So just pick a spot right on the inside face of that wall and click. And you'll kind of be able to see if it's there because you'll see that purple pink line right there on the inside face of the wall. Now go ahead and let's just do this for all four sides of this. All right, so now we have this rectangular shape. Next, all we have to do is come up here to the big green check mark and select on the big green check mark. It's going to ask us a couple of different questions now. The first one is, would you like the walls that go up to this floor's level to attach to its bottom? Now, from time to time, we might say yes to this. And what it would do is if there's any walls that are going to be directly underneath this floor that we just created, then those walls will be flush with the bottom of the floor. And in this case, I don't really want to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and say no to this. This next one says the floor slash roof overlaps the highlighted walls. And it's really talking about these blue lines we're seeing around the outside here. Would you like to join the geometry and cut the overlapping volume out of the walls? In this case, it might be a little bit questionable as to whether or not we should or should not do this. But so that you can see it, we're going to go ahead and say yes to this. Now, right offhand, it doesn't look like very much has happened, but something pretty big actually has. If we take a look at this in a 3D view now by coming up here to our default 3D view icon, we can now see that, yes, indeed, we have this floor and it's put in place right here at our level one. It's also sitting on the inside of where our foundation walls are at. If it's a little bit hard to see, we can always come down to our visual styles and we can turn on shaded, which is going to give us a little bit of color and we can see where this goes. One other thing to know is that one of those questions we answered yes to, which was cut the material out of it. But when it says, do you want to cut the material out? What it's really going to do is this. And if we come down here to where this colored box is, where we changed the graphic display options, turn this to the wireframe now. Now we can see through it and we can see what it's really done is it's actually cut the material out of each of these, and I'll call them column locations or peer locations. And it's, in fact, it's even cut the material out right here, sort of lowering it down. So we now have everything is actually sitting on top of our concrete floor or our concrete slab that we just poured into place. You'll find that slabs and floors are very similar elements, but slabs are entities that are designed to be on grade, which means on the earth, and are often load-bearing entities. Thus, they have structural properties and can be used by structural analysis software in analyzing buildings and their loads. So that's kind of the difference between using a floor tool and using the slab tool. In this exercise, we use it more as a floating slab, which means it doesn't really hold up any weight, just to illustrate how it can be drawn.